Greetings everybody and today I want to prove a very nice formula for the inverse Laplace transform. So if you have the inverse Laplace transform of some function capital F of S and if capital F of S can be expressed in terms of the quotients of two polynomials P and Q, um, if the degree of Q is greater than the degree of P, so if the degree of the denominator is bigger than the degree of the numerator, then the inverse Laplace transform of this function is just equal to the sum of all the residues of that function times e to the st. So this result actually comes from the Bromwich contour as well as the inverse Laplace transform formula. So recall that the inverse Laplace transform of some function f of s, it can be given by the following integral, it's 1 over 2 pi i times the integral from gamma minus i infinity to gamma plus i infinity of f of s times e to the st ds. And if we take a look at this interval of integration over here, it's actually some path in the complex plane. So if we take a look at what that looks like, um, gamma is just going to be some real number. So we're going to have a line that goes vertically through the complex plane. And there are some requirements we need from this path in gamma. Um, first of all, it needs to be on the right of all the poles of a function over here. Um, and in particular, this function f of s because e to the st is entire. So let's say, for example, our function has some poles over here. Our line gamma over here, or the real part of s is equal to gamma. It needs to be big enough such that all the poles are contained to the left of that line. And if we have this line over here, well, we want to use the residue theorem for that. So we're going to be constructing some kind of a path that goes around all of these poles. And we're going to do so by considering a circle of radius r, like so. And as r approaches infinity, what actually happens is that the integral over this path approaches zero. And I've actually shown in my previous video that if you take the limit as r approaches infinity on this path over gamma, so let's call this path over here gamma, of p of s divided by q of s, where p and q are polynomials, times e to the st ds, it's actually equal to zero. So you can go up to here, or click the link in the description to see the proof of that. It's a pretty um, useful lemma, because notice, if this is true, then if we consider the contour integral over the path, let's call the whole entire contour here C, this can be decomposed into the integral, well, over this path first, which is gamma minus i infinity to gamma plus i infinity, plus the integral over gamma. But we know that the contour integral, it can also be evaluated by considering um, 2 pi i times the sum of all the residues of the function we're dealing with, which is the integrand, so f of s times e to the st, like so. So if this integral over gamma here vanishes in the limit, that means that the integral we're evaluating, this specific integral over here, is just 2 pi i times the sum of all the residues, and that's exactly where this formula comes from, uh, because, well, if you plug everything in, this is 1 over 2 pi i, times what well, this integral, we just said it evaluates to 2 pi i times the sum of all the residues of our function f of s times e to the st, and obviously over here, these 2 pi i's cancel out, and indeed you get that the inverse Laplace transform of capital F of s is just given by the sum of all the residues of f of s times e to the st. So this is a very nice formula in order to evaluate Laplace trans or inverse Laplace transforms. You don't need to use the look at table um, or partial fractions or anything like that. So we will be using this result in future videos. And until next time, hope you guys have a wonderful day and I'll see everyone later. Bye bye.